we want to find the surface area of the part of the plane that lies inside the cylinder x squared plus y squared equals 4. Notice how if we graphed x squared plus y squared equals 4 on the xy coordinate plane, it will give us this circle here centered at the origin with a radius of 2. So before we set up the before we set up the double integral shown below to find the surface area, let's take a look at this graphically. So the function f of x comma y is the blue plane, and we're trying to find the surface area of the plane that's inside this red cylinder. If we look down on the xy plane, notice how this circle is going to be the region of integration. Again, it's a circle centered at the origin with a radius of 2. But if we angle this correctly, notice how the surface area is actually going to be the area of this of this ellipt of this ellipse of this elliptical region of this of the elliptical region shown here inside the red cylinder. So going back to our work, again here's a double integral that's going to give us the surface area. Notice how we'll have to find the partial with respect to x and the partial with respect to y. So again, we're given f of x comma y. So we're given f of x comma y is equal to the plane 3 plus 2x plus 4y. So the partial, so to find the partial with respect to x, we differentiate with respect to x, treating y as a constant, which would give us a partial derivative of just 2. And, the, and then for the partial with respect to y, we differentiate with respect to y, treating x as a constant. So the partial with respect to y would just be 4. And therefore, the surface area is going to be equal to the double integral over the region r, which is this circular region here, of the square root of 1, plus the partial with respect to x squared, that would be 2 squared, plus the partial with respect to y squared, that would be 4 squared. Then we have differential a. But for this example, because the region R is a circle, let's evaluate this using polar coordinates rather than rectangular coordinates. So for a quick review, when converting a double integral from rectangular form to polar form, we need to write the function f of x comma y as a function of r and theta using our formulas here. This won't apply in our case, though, because the integrand function is actually a constant. But differential a is equal to r dr d theta. So going back to our work, again, notice how the integrand function is just a constant. It's equal to the square root of the quantity 1 plus 4 plus 16, which equals the square root of 21. So in polar form, we'll have the double integral, and f of r comma theta is, and f of r comma theta is equal to the square root of 21, and then we have an extra factor of r and then dr d theta. And now, we need to find the, and now we need to define the limits of integration for r and theta that would trace out this circle in the xy plane. So notice how the radius r, so notice how the radius r would be from 0 to 2. And then to trace out the circle theta would be from 0 all the way to 2 pi radians, one full rotation. Let's go and evaluate this. To, let's go and evaluate this on the next slide. So we first find the antiderivative of r with respect to r. So we'll have the square root of 21 times r squared divided by 2. So we first find the antiderivative with respect to r. So that would give us the square root of 21 times r squared divided by 2, or the square root of 21 divided by 2 times r squared. So 
So with double integral from 0 to 2 pi, then we have the square root of 21 divided by 2. And then when r is 2, we'd have 2 squared. When r is 0, of course, we have 0 squared. So we have the integral, let's get the integral from 0 to 2 pi. Let's get the integral from 0 to 2 pi of, this would be the square root of 21 divided by 2 times, this is just going to be 4. And this is, notice how this simplifies to just 2 square root 21. So we have 2. So we have 2 square root 21 times an integral from 0 to 2 pi of 1 d theta. So we have 2 square root 21. The antiderivative of 1 with respect to theta would just be theta. So we have 2 square root 21 times the quantity. We have 2 pi minus 0. So the exact surface area is going to be equal to 2 so the exact surface area is going to be equal to 4 pi square root 21, and this would be square units. And let's also get our decimal approximation for this. And let's also get our decimal approximation for this value. So we have 4 pi, and then times the square root of 21, enter. So the approximate surface area would be 57.5863 square units. So going back to our graph one last time, we just found the surface area of the blue plane inside this red cylinder. We just found the surface area of this blue plane inside the red sil. We just found the surface area of this blue plane inside the red cylinder, which is which is elliptical, which would be this elliptical shaped region, which would be this which would be the area of this elliptical shaped region here. I hope you found this helpful.